Hi, this is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and today we're starting the second part of my series on installing Clipper. This is a update video from a video I did a year ago. In this video, I'm going to install Clipper via the Clipper install and update helper, which for me is the best way to install Clipper mainsail and fluid. It's also the best way if you want multiple instances. Now, part three of this video will be going over the configuration and changes you need to look at in your printer.config file. Now, both methodologies, particularly for the printer.config, are the same for both part one and part two. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, the easiest way to find the Clipper install and update helper is a simple Google search. And you're looking for the DW-0 slash AIAUH GitHub repository, again, the Clipper install and update helper. And you're going to go to that repo. And we're just going to go ahead and get started. Again, I'm going to start with my Raspberry Pi and my SD card. I'm going to use the Raspberry Pi imager, which we used in part one of this video series. So let me switch over to my desktop. So I have my Pi here. It's unplugged. And I'm just going to take the SD card. And this is, again, the same process I used from part one. So we're going to take the SD card, switch back over to my laptop, and then use the Clipper install and update helper in order to install Raspberry Pi operating system on here. So I've launched the Clipper install and update helper. I'm just going to hit choose device, and I'm doing a Raspberry Pi 4. I'm going to choose the OS. And I'm going to scroll down here and go to Raspberry Pi OS Other. I'm going to select the Raspberry Pi OS Lite. And this will be very lightweight version of Raspberry Pi OS, which from my perspective will be good because it'll be taking up less resources. So I'm just going to select this and then choose my storage device, which again, I'm using a 64 gig SD card, select that, and I'll go ahead and hit next. Now, I want to go ahead and edit the settings. As we pointed out last time, we go ahead and edit these settings, to make sure the Wi Fi is set up. This way, we don't have to go on to the root directory of the Pi and edit text files. So I'm just going to hit edit settings. I'm going to leave this as SWX1. I already have my username and password set up. I have my LAN set up. Looking through this, everything looks correct. So with these settings already done, I'm just going to hit save. And would you like to apply these customization settings? The answer is yes. We're going to delete the SD card. So hit yes again. In my case, I need to enter my admin password in order to write to the SD card. And I'm going to pause and come back when it's finished installing. So the Raspberry Pi OS has successfully installed. I'm just going to hit continue. And then I can close the Imager. Now, with the image successfully installed, I'm going to eject it from my machine, switch back over to my desktop or my desk camera, and then simply install the SD card. And then I'm going to go back over and plug this in and plug it into my printer just so I have everything all the way over there. So let me pause and we'll come back. I've gone ahead and started booting up the Pi. I'm going to SSH into the Pi using my terminal. This is, I'm doing this on a Mac. If you're doing this on a Windows machine, please refer to part one of this video series. And I'll walk you through the steps of using PuTTY to SSH in via Windows. Now, the commands once I SSH in are going to be the same both for Windows and Mac. So I'll just proceed as is. So I'm just going to type in. SSH Wilson M, that's my username, at sidewinderx1.local. I'll hit enter on the keyboard. And this may take a couple of minutes because it, it takes some time for the Raspberry Pi operating system to unpack on the SD. If your system prompts you to, are you sure you want to connect? In this case, this is a safe device. So we just want to click. Yes, and that has added it to our list of known hosts. So we just want to go back and connect again. And this should again prompt us for a password. So we're going to enter that in. And now we're SSHed into the machine. So we're ready to go ahead and start adding our commands. 
And this again is the same commands are going to be used on both Windows and on Mac. I've gone ahead and called up the instructions from the GitHub page. So I'm just going to start pasting the commands and I'm starting with step one here and hit enter. And that's going to update the system and then look for any changes and install any updates. It's also going to install Git. Only Git installed will actually download and start working with the Clipper install and update helper. That command's done. We're going to go to step two. I'm just going to copy this here and paste it in my command window. So that's downloading the Clipper install and update helper. Let's go ahead and hit LS and you'll see there it is. So at this point, we're ready to actually go ahead and install and run the installer now for the Clipper install and update helper. So this is going to run a script and you'll see brings up a little interface. We have nothing installed right now. And let's go ahead and start with number one, the install process. And if we look here, we're just going to go down this list. So I'm going to install Clipper, Moonraker, then Mainsail and Fluid. And I'll install basically, not everything here, but I'll install a lot of the, the different tools here just to have it. So let's start with number one. First thing it's asking me is which version of Python do I want to use? I want to use the recommended. So I'm just going to leave that as number one. Now, next it's asking me my number of instances. This goes back if you want to run multiple instances of Clipper, you can go ahead and do that and you can add those instances. Now, you can go back after the fact and add more instances. In my case, I'm just gonna run one instance off this Pi. So I'm gonna leave it set to one, and that's gonna start the install process, and this will take a couple minutes. Now, as it's installing, it might ask you this question. If you wanna add your current user to the proper groups, the answer is yes. We're just gonna click capital Y and let that continue. Now we're back to the install page, and I'm just going to proceed to Moonraker. Again, yes to install, and we'll let this go. So now that Moonraker is complete, we're going to install Mainsail. I install both Mainsail Fluid, and I also include Octoprint. That way, if I want to try something different in the future, test something, it's all there. Now it will prompt you to install the special macros. I always hit yes here. And we're back to the install interface. So I'm just going to proceed with number four. And I'm going to type 8085 for, for Fluid. And again, yes to the special macros. As you can see, this is pretty quick. Now I'm going to install Clipper screen. I'm probably not going to use it on this machine, but just for the heck of it, let's have it. It's not going to hurt anything to install it. So Clipper screen will prompt you to install as a service. You want to click yes, and then that should complete the install. So now I'm going to go ahead and install Octoprint, and I want to click yes. Now the rest of the installs are sort of optional. In my case, I'm going to install the DG code. I'll install it on 7136. That's fine. It's leaving everything as the default. I won't install 8 and 9 because I don't use them, but I do use Octo everywhere. I'll install N, and I'm probably going to have to option out of this because I don't have my are all set up right now. Probably going to prompt me for my API key. And I'm just going to hit no here because I don't have things ready. Now I'll, I'll come back. I can always come back in and install this again. And I'll install Crow's Nest. As you can see, it's prompting me to add this to the update manager. I want to click yes and proceed. And I want to reboot my machine. So I'm going to delete the N, type a lowercase y, and hit yes. So this will reboot and I'll have to SSH back in. So I'm going to pause and then we'll come back in a second. So I've given my device time to reboot and I'll just SSH back in. And I just want to check to make sure there's nothing else I want to install. We're going to run the Clipper install and update helper script. As we can see, everything's installed. This is looking exactly the way I want it. Now to test things, let's go over here and I'm going to type in HTTP colon slash slash sidewinder x1.local and that does in fact bring up clipper for me so that's exactly what i want to say now we're going to need to make some changes over here in the clicker in clipper install and update helper we we need to actually generate our clipper fire file to install it on our printer so let's proceed with that for this next step we need to go ahead and generate 
the firmware file that we can then flash on our printer. So we're going to hit number four and we're going to work on generating the file we need. Something I just want to do right here is I do want the G code shell command. So I'm just going to install that before I do anything else. Now, what I want to do for the firmware is I just want to build it. I've tried building and flashing and all that. Nothing ever works correctly for me. And I'm not sure I'm doing it right. So I just want to do the build only. And this will bring up the basic installer or clipper for generating the firmware file. Now, as you can see, I've navigated over to the clipper config example file uh, GitHub. And I'm just looking for the SKR2, which is what's in my Sidewinder X1. Now, we'll notice looking through here, this has our instructions. We want the 32 ABI bootloader. We want to, we have two different boards. We have the SKR2, but then we also have the F. 429 version of the board. We're looking for STM32, and depending on which version of the board, either F407 or F429. In my case, I know I have F429. So let's go over the configurator. We don't have to do anything with low level configurations. We're going to select the next option, hit the space bar, then let's scroll down. Here's the STM electronics. Let's click that. Now let's do the processor model. So we're looking for F407 or 429. In my case, I want 429. I'm going to hit the space bar to select it. It's already set up on the 32 KBI bootloader and USB communication. I'm not going to change anything else. I'm just going to hit Q and I'm going to save my configuration. So I want to hit yes. And as you can see, it's now building the file we need. Now, if we look up here, right at this line, you'll notice the clipper.bin has been created. So in order to get this file, we're going to have to access this, the Pi, and download it. Now, the easiest way to do that, I found, is to use an FTP program. I use CyberDuck, which is free and open source. So let's start CyberDuck. As you can see, CyberDuck is started. I'm going to open a connection. I want to change my protocol to SFTP. It's going to be on port 22, so that looks good. So I want to type Sidewinder x1.local, type in my username and password, and let's hit connect. So I'm going to navigate to Clipper and out. And right here is my Clipper.bin. I can see it was just created today. So I'm going to download this. So I want to right click on it and then just go to download as. What I'm going to do is I'm going to be a little lazy. I'm going to click on my SD card because I've inserted that into my machine. And I'm going to name this firmware.bit. You might ask, why am I doing that? And I'll show you in a minute. So firmware.bit. And let's download it. Now, if we take a quick look back over here at our configuration example, it actually tells us once we generate it to rename it firmware.bin, put it on an SD card, and then put it in, into the SKR2. So now let's look at our file explorer and go down to our device. And there's our firmware.bin. Now I'm going to delete this file here. And let's inject this and I'm going to go over and start my printer. So I'll be right back. And while this is flashing on my machine, I'm going to make some changes over here in main set. So I want to click machine. And here is my printer.config. And to make things easier, I'm going to go over here to the sample config, click raw, and then copy everything here. Go back over to my, back over here. I'm going to leave these top three lines, and then I'm just going to paste in the sample config. And in my case, I can even go down here since I have 2209s on this printer. I'll just uncomment those. It's not going to hurt anything. So we'll uncomment those. Now, it's not going to connect to the printer right now. And I'll show you why here in a second. If I scroll up here, this line needs to be customized for my printer. Now, we have two ways of doing this. Let's go back over 
your configuration. Let's try doing it this way. So I'm going to click number five here, and I connected via USB. So let's try number one. And here is my connection string. So I want to copy that and then go over here to the MCU section, my printer.config, and paste it in. So let's hit save and restart. And as you can see, we're now connected to the Raspberry Pi and connected to the printer. So now I'm ready to go on to my next step, which is configuring and setting up my printer.config file. I'm going to do the setup for the printer.config in part three of this video series. So I want to thank you for joining me today. I hope you have a great day. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks. Bye. This is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and I want to thank you for joining me today. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. If you need some additional help, I've also posted some links in the video description. You can set up a 15-minute help session with me, and I'm more than happy to sit down with you and see if I can help you out. If you need some additional help, I'm also going to try doing one-hour sessions for anybody that's interested. And like I said, I'm testing this stuff out. I want to thank you again for joining me, and I look forward to talking to you again next time. Thanks. Have a good day.